Pakistan is at its crossroads. When we talk about democracy, we have what we we have what the People's Party likes to call a democratic government. But it really is not democracy. As we all know, democracy is empowerment of the people. Democracy is a government that works in the interests of the people for its people. And today, Pakistan, the people, the vast majority of our people are suffering. There is no there is no security for them. Food inflation is at its highest. There's electric shortages in Pakistan. There's unemployment in Pakistan. People are homeless. People are dying. People are hungry. There's no clean drinking water in Pakistan. So when we talk about democracy, we really don't have democracy in Pakistan. But we need it. That is an established form of government in civilized countries of the world. Those are the governments that work for their people. And that is what we want in Pakistan. Now when we speak of change, Imran Khan's struggle, it has been for the people. His politics is not power politics. It's not necessarily the traditional lot of corrupt and failed politicians that we have in Pakistan today. Imran Khan's struggle has been for the rights of the people. He speaks of building institutions in Pakistan. He talks about education. He speaks about rule of law. And I promise you, being one of the first 10 people when the party was formed, I have been with Pakistan Tehri Kensa. And I'm very proud, alhamdulillah, to be a member of his team. I have learned a lot from our great leader. Imran has the courage, he has the intelligence, and he's got the commitment to serve Pakistan. Now all of you who are sitting here, you're all very good people, you live in a wonderful country, you're all hardworking people, you work for what the money you make, you pay taxes, you're law-abiding citizens, but it is all possible because you have an environment that is conducive to your growth, an environment that sends your children to school, policies that look up, you know, government policies that provide safety for you, you pay taxes, you do all those things which are not happening in Pakistan. Because Pakistan does not have the institutions that would, you know, encourage citizens to come forward and they play their role in nation building. So Imran Khan talks about building those institutions. When we speak of change, Change is not just something in the air, you know, that you can easily talk about and then just say, all right, this is the change. Change is something that is imminent, that must come, and especially to a country like Pakistan. Pakistanis, all over the world, we have the best students. We have students today who are creating world records in education. We have the best businessmen, we have the best professionals, whether they're doctors, or lawyers, even housewives are, I mean, anywhere that you look around, you will see that Pakistanis are doing well. They are prosper prospering in foreign countries. But they're scared to come back to Pakistan. Decent educated people like you, we want to make Pakistan a country where you would come back feeling secure, with pride, with happiness, and come and say that you want to make a contribution to your country. But today, because there is no merit, there is poor governance, total corruption in Pakistan, corruption which has just eaten away the very fabric of our society, the foundations of our uh, society have been shook by the amount of corruption we see in Pakistan today. It has to change. It can only change if we hold people accountable. It can only change when we have policies that affect the many, not just made for the few who, you know, misuse the resources that Pakistan has at its disposal. Pakistan is not a poor country. Pakistan is rich in resources. We have a lot of talent. We have a lot of brain in Pakistan. We have a lot of mineral resources in Pakistan. So when Imran Khan talks about not being subservient to foreign countries and to, for, you know, to be looking up for aid, he only talks of self-reliance for Pakistan. He's speaking about putting Pakistan back on its feet, you know, with courage, with dedication, 
bring people forward. We have a lot of talent that is unexploited in Pakistan. So please, I urge you all who are sitting here, those of you who are not members of Pakistan Tehreek and Saab, I request you and I invite you to become members of this political group. We are the only political party which is officially registered in the United States. We file our taxes, we're registered with the IRS. We are registered as a political party with FARA, which is foreign, um, FARA is? Foreign Agents Registration Act. Absolutely. Foreign Agents Registration Act. And we are, abide by their rules. We have what we call paying members. Paying members pay a mere $10 a month, which is an automatic deduction if you become a member online. If you prefer to write a check, it has to be an annual payment of $120. Now, $10 a month does not cause a dent in anybody's pocket. I don't know how much a happy meal at McDonald's costs, maybe it's $10, it's not such a big deal. And each and every one of us who's sitting here can afford that. You have to be absolutely sure and there is no need for any fear because all these monies that are collected for Pakistan Tehreek and Saf in the United States, they are channeled and sent, sent back to Pakistan through official means. Everything is on record. When you become a member online, it is with the Bank of America. They do not give us any of your information. It's a very simple procedure. You just have to give your name, address, and a phone number and a credit card. And the bank keeps that information. All that we as PTI get is your email address and your name. An email address so that we can be in touch with you because you're our members. Now those are paying members at $10 a month. And presently we have over 2,000 members in the US. Our target is 5,000 members. The monies that we collect goes to Pakistan. It helps to run our party offices. It helps with the promotional materials. It helps to take our message to every nook and corner of Pakistan. It's a small amount when given individually, but collectively it amounts to a lot when it is translated into Pak rupees. So please, I urge you all to become paying members. But if for some reason you do not wish to be a paying member, you can also be a non-paying member. A non-paying member is different in the sense that when it comes to party elections, and we have elections within our party, then you will not be allowed to vote. That's the only difference. You will be included in everything else, but you don't have a voting right if you're not a paying member. So please, I request you all, tonight before you leave, think about it. Pakistan needs you. This is a very small amount for your country. And I'm so glad that you're all here on a weekday. I know it's a work day tomorrow, and you all have taken the trouble of coming here. It's because you care. You do care for Pakistan. No matter where we live, Pakistan, if it is the country of our birth, if it is the country of your parents' birth, we're always Pakistanis at heart. And I know that you're all wonderful Pakistani Americans. I have spent a lot of my adult life in the US. I went to school here. I raised a family here. And I think, and I always say this in Pakistan, I have no inhibitions and I'm not scared to say that I think that the Americans are one of the finest people on God's earth. They're humane. You know, three years ago when I was raising money for the flood victims in Pakistan through the platform of Imran Khan Foundation, I traveled the country and I was raising money for the floods. Believe me, I went into churches. I even spoke at synagogues. And everywhere that I went, our friends, the, the, the local people, they came out and whatever that they could contribute, they contributed because they believe in serving humanity. They are good people. So that brings me now to the next subject because for the benefit of our friends who are sitting here, when Imran Khan speaks about an independent foreign policy, we are not against any government. We want to have a good working relationship with most countries of the world. And traditionally and historically, we have a long-standing partnership with the US. The United States has always been a friend of Pakistan. 
and we have always been their allies. It's a very changed and very complex world today. Since 9-11, a lot has happened. And there's just so much restlessness in the world today, including the United States itself. There are financial problems here. The economy is taking a bad turn. These two wars which are being fought abroad, they are hurting the American economy and the American people as well. But I don't know, I don't want to get into all that, but all I'm trying to say is, that when Imran Khan speaks of an independent foreign policy, he speaks of a policy that is homegrown. A policy which is made in Pakistan. A policy which is in the national interest of Pakistan. We speak about a policy which is not a threat to the sovereignty of Pakistan. So we're not against the United States, we're not against anybody. We want to have good relations with our neighbors which includes India, Iran, Afghanistan. You know, we live in that region. So we want to coexist with our neighbors peacefully. Pakistan is a peace-loving country. Our people are peace-loving. We had never experienced terrorism, but it is at our doors today. And Pakistan is the country which has paid the most and suffered the most loss of life in this war against terror. So Imran Khan is not against the United States. And he has said on many a forums he's spoken, we do a lot of our fundraising for our charitable institutes, for the Shokat Khan Cancer Hospital, for Naman University, for the Imran Khan Foundation. Year in and year out, we come back to the US. And you know, we collect money here. We respect what you are doing. We respect and we also appreciate the fact that a lot of you, in fact, we encourage this, that if you are Pakistani Americans, you must take interest in American politics as well and be part of mainstream politics in this country. There's not a, an issue or a conflict of interest at all. But as Pakistanis, I know no matter where Pakistanis live, they want to feel good about Pakistan. They want to hold their head up high and feel that we are being addressed and Pakistan is being looked at as dignified people, people with dignity. And the majority of Pakistanis, you know, Pakistanis are a very resilient people. They are a very brave people. And this is the truth. And I promise you that before I joined Pakistan, Tehri Kain Saf, I was not aware of how strong our people are. But it is the politics which has taken people like myself into so many remote areas of Pakistan, into the rural and urban areas where I would normally not have ventured. But we have been there because that is our work. As the head of the women wing in Pakistan, you know, I travel with a lot all over the country. I have, we have great teams, we have great women leaders. And the reason being that Imran Khan is a very progressive person. He encourages participation of women, youth, in the politics of our country. And it is Pakistan Tehreek in South which has given a voice to the women. It is Pakistan Tehreek in South on whose platform the youth today rally behind Imran Khan because they see hope. Like Jahangir Saab was saying, Imran symbolizes hope. Why? Because when you look at Imran Khan, you see a man who's educated, a man who has courage, a man who has spine, a man who is committed, and a man who has dedicated his life for the welfare of the people of Pakistan. Has he or has he not? So why do I not hear an applause? <laughs> applause only shows that you are listening to me. <laughs> So it's nice, it's a way of participating, it's a way of interacting. So it's not like, it's not like I'm fishing for a compliment for Imran Khan, but this is a fact. We all know this. And when we look at Imran Khan, look at his track record, look at his track record of service for Pakistan. In his youth, as a sportsman, he was the best. He only made it to be the best because he was hardworking, because he was focused, he had the energy and he, was, he knew what he wanted to achieve for Pakistan. Then he became a philanthropist, which he still is today. And he's one of the greatest philanthropists anywhere in the world. Because I would like you all to know, my distinguished guest sitting here at this table, 
You know, there are three, four different institutions of philanthropy that are running under the supervision of Imran Khan. And the cancer hospital in Lahore, the Shokat Khan and Cancer Hospital, by any Western standards comparable to any medical institute in the world, Shokat Khanam is outstanding because it provides the same kind of treatment, state-of-the-art technology, the best medical facility for cancer treatment, and 80% of the patients are treated free of any cost. It's not happening anywhere in the world. For a cancer patient to be treated in the United States, a treatment which would cost that person $200,000 at least will only cost about $30,000 in Pakistan. But we have the same team, we have you know, surgeons, we have doctors, we have people, uh, top-notch professionals from the medical field from all over the world, including the United States, who come to Pakistan. They conduct um, seminars, workshops, training sessions, because as you all know, Shokat Khan and Cancer Hospital is also a research center. It's also an educational uh, facility. So apart from the medical side of it, and you know, in the year 2005, the World Health Organization gave an award to Shokat Khan and Cancer Hospital as, a, a, you know, a, a medical institute par excellence. It was one of the best in the world, and it received an award from them. And it continues to be so. Then we have Namal University. Namal University is a co-ed university, which, is, which has been established by Imran Khan. It is in one of the most remote areas of Pakistan, bordering Waziristan in Miyawali. Miyawali is a district and it borders Waziristan. Now there are about 400 students at that university at the moment. The university is affiliated with Bradford University in the United Kingdom. Imran Khan happens to be the only foreigner, uh, well, Pakistani, who is